Welcome to our program, Ananda Dara Yoga Village, helping people attain bliss, part one of three. Yoga originated in India more than 5,000 years ago. It was introduced to Western society in the 19th century. Since then, this ancient wisdom has transcended all boundaries and spread to every corner of the globe. The many benefits it brings to body, mind and spirit have made yoga not only a popular form of exercise, but also a kind of lifestyle. Today, we are privileged to introduce you to Rutger Taminga, the co-founder of a special institution that endeavors to spread the yoga spirit the Ananda Dara Yoga Village, Center for Applied Neohumanism, based in Taichung City, Taiwan, also known as Formosa. The center was established in 1995 by Mr. Taminga, who is originally from the Netherlands, and Mohamukta of Formosa. Ananda Dara, which means abode of bliss, in Sanskrit, is a place aspiring to promote and apply the neo-humanism philosophy of the venerated Indian spiritual guru Sri Prabhat Ranjan Sarkar, also known as Baba, through many initiatives including yoga and wellness classes for different age groups and people with special needs, group meditation, yoga teacher training, and storytelling workshops. Starting from scratch, 25 years ago, the couple eventually established this mountain spiritual retreat center in a beautiful setting. They have also founded a kindergarten, published an assortment of yoga-themed educational materials for children, such as storybooks, music CDs and kindergarten curriculums. Many of their trained yoga teachers have established their own centers for children and are now training the next generation of yoga instructors. In this episode, Rutger shares his perspectives on yoga and now provides an overview of the practice. Yoga goes back 7,000 years and it started in the Himalayas in India. And Originally, it was taught from master to disciple, disciple, teach another disciple. Now, over the years, there have been many changes. So basically, yoga, you can separate into four main directions, hatha yoga, karma yoga, bhakti yoga, and jnana. Uh, hatha yoga means the physical exercise. So when you say the common yoga, this is what we usually see in the advertising uh, and the commercials and the yoga centers they advertise the hatha yoga means the physical yoga now the second yoga is the yoga of bhakti devotion devotional yoga is about purifying the heart by surrendering your your small self to the infinite and then we have the karma yoga. Karma yoga means the yoga of action. So uh, usually people associate yoga with leaving the world. But karma yoga says, no, you stay in the society with your family, you do your work, but through your work, you keep an awareness of your inner being. And then the last yoga is jnana yoga, the yoga of knowledge, the philosophy. But actually uh, every practice has something of these four aspects of yoga. Now, there are some people, they may practice more of the knowledge. They like philosophy. They like to train their intellect and have a deeper understanding of life. And uh, another direction is people maybe don't like too much logic or an analysis, and they will use a more devotional approach. And they feel sweetness in singing about the universe and the power of the beauty of life. Now, so personally, I practice what we call Raja Yoga. Raja means the king, and it's more a mental practice. So my, my path, what I learned, is more about meditation. 
And so yoga has different aspects of meditation, breathing, visualization, purification of the mind. Mr. Taminga feels yoga practitioners should pay close attention to diet and discusses his vegetarian lifestyle. Part of the reason why the, the world is heating up is because of meat production. Um, but to come back to the, the yoga side of, of our diet, there are other foods we also avoid taking. Uh, apart from meat, we don't eat eggs. They are not good for our mental peace. And uh, this kind of sensitivity develops when you practice more. The idea of yoga is to develop a purer mind, a more stable and peaceful mind. And our food affects how we think. So if we eat food that makes us more aggressive or makes us lethargic or dull, then this is not going to help our yoga practice. We will pause a moment for a positive message and then return. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to our program Ananda Dara Yoga Village, Helping People Attain Bliss, Part 1 of 3. Mr. Taminga now elaborates on his views regarding the core benefits of practicing yoga, which include making many important self-discoveries. Yoga has many different benefits. The real purpose of yoga is to find your inner identity. Now, in this path, you, you can get rid of many confusions and many uh, illusions. Now this already frees the mind. So when you feel a purer self, you don't identify yourself with maybe a social identity or with a, a made up identity. You find your own beauty. Now when you find your own beauty, then the, the first benefit is you feel happier. And I think that's what most people really want. Not only people, it's here all living beings, like we are here in the forest. Every little plant, every little creature actually wants happiness. Now human beings have this chance to find infinite happiness. Now the yoga practice is there to, to bring this. So the one side is the mental benefit. And the other side, of course, you feel healthier. You do the yoga postures, the twisting, the, the stretching. Your, your body feels better. So, and you feel healthier. Your digestion will be better. Your lungs will be cleaner. So there are many benefits on this side. The peer-reviewed journal Frontiers in Psychiatry published an article regarding youth and yoga. It stated, yoga may also aid in shifting self-awareness in ward to children's own cues and emotions, and thus counteract negative social and cultural influences, including the current media pressure to be always online and available. As yoga often results in improved focus and concentration, regular practice is frequently accompanied by better academic performance. Yoga has also been shown to help children with attention problems, as well as to support executive function development. Mr. Taminga has much experience in teaching yoga to youngsters and shares some of the insights he has gained. Actually, it's very interesting. Um, like, I teach yoga to children. 
And if you had asked me this 25 years ago, can children do yoga? I would have said no. Because traditionally, yoga is for people from 12 years onwards. And when the body is more mature, and so we can do the adult yoga with 12 year olds and up. Uh, now we do yoga with babies. And they're like, now I'm a grandfather. I have a small granddaughter. And when you help her stretch her joints and stretch her, her limbs, she feels wonderful. And she will not stop. She wants you to continue to help her. So actually yoga can be done by everybody. Um, we also do yoga with children who have special needs. And, you know, um, together with my, my wife, we have a kindergarten. And in our school, we get children who have maybe developmental problems. And we have found yoga to be beneficial to these children also. And uh, the first kid I got, her name was Sandy, and she is autistic. And when she came to school, uh, for the first few months, she could not cooperate with the teacher. She could not respond to the teacher. And um, so then every day I would put a yoga mat on the floor. And I would say, Sandy, come. For three months, she didn't let me touch her body. But then after some time, she saw her classmates were joining. So then she came. And every day, Monday to Friday, I would spend 20 minutes with her, help her do basic stretching, what we do in yoga. Now, the first thing I noticed is that her immune system got much better. She used to have a runny nose and this, this stopped. And after another six months, this child from not talking, she was able to communicate. And so from that experience, I found that autistic children actually also have benefits of yoga. So actually yoga is for everyone, but it needs to be adjusted according to every person. So there's not one yoga for everybody. There are many forms of yoga that are suitable for different situations, different ages. Mm -hmm.